friends do on YouTube. We thank you for the sake of friendship. Sunday school lesson. Our title is Joshua, the Prophet of Conquest. The Bible background reading is Joshua, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse through the sixth chapter to the 27th. And we read from Joshua, the fifth chapter, the 13th through the 6, 5, 15 to 16, 20. Individually, individual, and corporately, people face choices. How do we discern what choices are the best organized for our action? Joshua and the people of Israel choose to honor and cover with God, obeying God's instruction perfectly. I aim to change. By the end of this lesson, we will explain how Joshua act obediently to the vision from God and reflect on efficiency when challenge overwhelms us and commit to obeying God, especially in challenging time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for giving us the right mind to come to Sunday school. Lord, we thank you for giving us the mind to learn. Lord, open our minds so we can get the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom so we can implement it in our life and let it so it can shine and show your glory so people can ask us questions why we feel, why we act this way. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a good lesson because it it's something we need to use during this time we are going through in the church and in this world. Sister Smith, if you don't mind, can you read the scriptures for us? Rising and giving God all praises, we're in Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. Thank you. Chapter 6, yes. verses 1 through 5, and then verses 15, 16, and 20 of Joshua 6. Joshua 5 and 13 said, When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in the front of him with a sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, Are you the friend or are you foe? Neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And Joshua did as he was told. Joshua 6 and 1 states, Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut up, because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its kings and all of its strong warriors, and you and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the wall of the town will collapse, and the people can charge straight into the town. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn, marched around the town as they had did before. But this time, they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on his horn. Joshua commanded the people, shout for the Lord who has given you the town. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and, and, and the people, and said unto the people, shout for the Lord has given you the town. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. 
and they took the city. And the other verse of it was. And that's, that's it. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sister mm -hmm. Smith. I'm going to go back to the aim of change. I got to say. What we're going to talk about today is going on what we got to deal with now. We are at a time of challenges, and we are getting overwhelmed, and also committed. During this pandemic, we are getting tested on commitment, how you handle the situation, and what you're going to do within that situation. This is what's going to separate the, the real saints from the fake saints. And the three things we're going to talk about today is the messenger of the plan, the plan to conquer Jericho, and Joshua, Joshua obeyed the plan. But let me talk about Jericho real quick. Let me read this. Set in the southern portion of Jordan Valley, Jericho was near the east-west roadway that connected Transjordan with the hills of Palestine. So basically, Jericho was like Flint and Beach. So it's right like that, the way they come in the east and west. Jericho was a popular place because it was an oasis, what's that, Satitude? Satitude in a hot plain. I'm saying that right. Oh, Situated. Oh, situated. No, I'm saying it all wrong. <laughs> I'm looking at it all wrong. Let me stand up. He blasted. That lets you know you can know. <laughs> Don't say it. Notch <laughs> from other major settlements over the life of the city. Jericho has served as both a busy urban center and a small campsite. As an early stage of Stone Age, Jericho was a walk town about 10 acres. Jericho came to have solid defense rampart, rampart, and walls. By Joshua time, the wall of Jericho, which had been built thousands of years early, was still being used for defense of the cellar. This was a wall that could not be penetrated. No army, nobody can be penetrated. If something man cannot do, man cannot handle, cannot do it, only one person can do it. That is God. The story of, the story of Joshua, conquest of Jericho, report many items of significance for Israel history, subsequent Jews, and Christian theology. From narrative of the spies at Rahab house, one learned Jericho was a walled city with houses and gates and windows. Some houses were built into the wall of the city in Joshua 2 and 1. According to the stoppage of Jordan waters at Adama. This is it Adama? Yeah. Adama. 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 Report the crossing right against Jericho. This was an unreachable city. Yeah. They built houses into the wall to make it stronger. Mm -hmm. See, back in them time, they had stones, boulders. They can hit that wall all they want. It's not going to hurt it mm -hmm. or nothing. I'm going to go a little bit back around Joshua. Joshua, the mighty leader of the Israelite military commander, knew his God believed he would give his nation the promised land. Military, God instructed Joshua to plunge into Palestine and divide it to the north and the south. Jericho was the first target of conquest since it lay directly in the path of their destination. Jericho lay in the valley of Jordan River. In this lush tropical climate, palm, sycamores, and hina hen tree grew. Great wealth. Jericho would be an idea for the first fruit, sacrifice for God. Jericho was going to sacrifice the city for God. This was a perfect sacrifice because they had the best of everything. When you sacrifice, give God something, you give him your best. 
When you come to church, you dress, you dress your best. Even though we may, the pastor let us dress down, but we still dress our best. We don't dress like a bum coming to the church. We have pride and ownership the way we do. Anything you do in the church, you do it your best. If you come in, you come in and start picking up paper out the floor, you gave your best. Don't be like some folks walk in, they walk right past. You give your best. Once Israelites had safely crossed the Jordan, they commemorated the event by placing 12 stones at the riverbed and placing them next to the campfire. For the COVID here, we was going through this in Bible study, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. The 12 stones represent the 12 tribes. That's the remembrance of them crossing that river. Those stones will serve to commemorate the instruction future generation about the Lord intervention at Jordan River. They let them, let them know this was a miracle what God have done. How we remember it today in our time when we give a testimony how good God is. And we sit there and tell when God opened the door when no one, no one else could open. Amen. As they crossed Jordan, the manner which had fallen from heaven each day has since had deceased. Since Israel had reached the promised land, the daily provision of manna was long, longer necessary. He didn't have to feed him mm -hmm. like he was in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now they have to work. They can live mm -hmm. off the land. And these, one thing about Joshua, he was a warrior. During that time, they had to be a warrior. Yeah. And also be a, a preacher and a teacher. Mm -hmm. They had to fight. God had to teach them how to fight. Remember, they was dependent on Egyptians. Mm -hmm. They had to learn how to fight. For they didn't come to Christ, they had to be retaught. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing you come in the daytime. When we come to the church, we have to learn how to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. We can say we confess with our mouth to the Lord. We believe Jesus died for our sins. We still have to learn how to be a Christian. We got to learn how to be kind, giving, thoughtful, and be a willing worker, and, and how to be a servant. That's the hardest part of being a Christian, how to be a servant. Obedience. Yes, it's real. I was just saying obedience. If we would obey, yeah. you yes. know, what the Lord ha would have us to do first, then being in servitude is nothing. It's just all about obedience. We fight with that with our children, with ourselves, with our mate, you know, like our husbands or our wives. You have to obey. And uh, as she was saying, right, obedience. When you come be a Christian, you just like you're going into the military. God gonna break you down, and He gonna build you back up. But He gonna build you up in the way you can handle every situation come your way. Now I'm gonna go to our three main topics we are gonna talk about. The messenger of the plan. Prior to the siege of Jericho, Joshua had an encounter that was similar to Moses at the burning bush. God deal with Joshua as he did with Moses. But it was already predicted he was gonna do that. And God gave his word he was gonna do that. Joshua saw a man standing in front of him with a sword drawn. And Joshua asked the man whether he was an enemy or ally. Neither, the man replied. The man identified himself as the commander of the army of the Lord. That further let you know he was visited by an angel. Upon hearing this, Joshua fell to the ground face down in reverence. Joshua asked what message the Lord had for him. And he was then told to take off his shoes as the place where he stand was holy. What I've been talking about over and over and over, wherever you go, you make that place holy. When you go in that car, you make it holy. When you go in your house, you make it sanctified and holy. Your presence make it holy. And God can come anywhere. Mm -hmm. Ain't no certain place you got to go to. Because Jesus had died to and, and died on the cross and, and completed the covenant. 
So God can come anywhere in the, in the name. You ask in the name of Jesus, he'll come anywhere. Any place you step, he will come. Your kids acting up in school, when you walk in, you make it holy and God can help you command that situation right then and there. Now we're going to talk about the plan to conquer Jericho. The resident of Jericho had anticipated the attack. When you are saved and people will know you coming, your spirit, your presence will let them know you here. And you know you walk in how the conversation will change. Mm -hmm. It's just like you'll be at a job. They up there doing foolishness. They know by what time you walk in. It's off the string. They sit there and try to get themselves together before you walk in. Mm -hmm. You just a co-worker just like them. But they had that much respect for you. They knew they were coming because they seen what they did already. See, word travels. And when you're doing God work, it would travel. The city was closed to all, incoming and outgoing. They were afraid of Israel. Might they shut the city down? Mm -hmm. They were trying to prepare for war. They knew if the Israelites coming, they take it. They're not coming as passing by. They were taken and conquered. Mm -hmm. And giving Joshua instruction, the Lord is assured them that the victory had already been won. This is what God had been telling us over and over. It don't matter what our situation we're going through. We have already won. Amen. You've got to believe and use your faith. Amen. When Joshua was walking and doing that's why he was the commander, he had the faith. We may have a situation going on, but you still got to have the face to move on. Yeah. You want to add anything, Mr. Lever? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. They would not take it by direct force. It's part of a siege tactic. Tactic. Joshua was not going to in need to batter rams or heavy armor to enter the city. Instead, men was to walk around the city in silence. He gonna do something they would never expect. Mm -hmm. When you go to war, you expect them to come with sudden equipment, weapons. And when that person do the opposite, they do the opposite thing, then you get leery. Then you got to think what they up to, what is they doing. Once a day around the city in silence, once a day for six days. Seven priests led the procession. Seven priests represent the seven days. Escorted the ark which symbolized God's presence. They had the ark of the covenant. What they were doing those seven days, they were showing the presence of God. So every day of the week, we get up in the morning. And we thank God for waking us up. When we walk out that door, the ark is inside us. We are the church and we represent God. Everywhere we go, we show the presence of God. Amen. That's why the light shine bright on us when we walk. When we go anywhere to any presence, we show that for seven days. The ark symbolized God's presence. The ark went before Israel when they went into battle. So they let you know, you bring it into our time, what we're going through now with this pandemic. Before you do anything, take it to God. Let him give you the knowledge and wisdom you need so you know how to react. Mm -hmm. Don't go by how you will react. Because sometimes you go by how you react, it ain't going to turn out nice. Mm -hmm. Mr. and sister ain't nice sometimes. Because mm -hmm. if you you human, you're going to run off that mouth and tell them getting them thing or two. In its essence, therefore, the Lord went before Israel in every battle. On the seventh day, the priests and the men of war was walking around the city seven times. After completing day seven lap, the priests were to blow the trumpet. Mm -hmm. It would be the signal for the people to shout through the purpose of battle cry inspired, inspired the troops as it intimidated the enemy. 
the priest will blow the horn. The priest will announce in God. When pastor preach, when he say anything, anybody in leadership, they are announcing God present. Mm -hmm. When you, you're a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, a missionary, it don't matter, you announce in God present when you open your mouth. The dual purpose of the battle cry was to inspire the troops as an intimidated enemy. The walls of Jericho would fall flat in verse 5. The men would then be able to capture the city with ease because it would be taken by the power of the Lord. So when you put God in something and he take control of it, his power is going to show. And people going to ask you how. Because you say, that man had turned me down. Man told me no, but God opened. God got the key to every door he can open. Yeah. When doors get slammed in your face, you have to have faith and keep going. Because you got the Ark of the Covenant inside you. The Ark of the Covenant inside us right now is the Holy Ghost. He is our comforter and he is our power. That's why he was left here on earth when Jesus ascended. Sometimes God gives us instruction that may seem far-fetched. We just can't believe. He really instructs us. We should remember God's way is not our way. His yeah. thought is not our thought. Let me say that again. God's way are not our way. His thought is not our thought. He knows what is needed at any given time. He tells us to trust him, and he has never let us let his people down, as Scripture has shown us again and again. If God gives us a direction, if God gives you a sign, you do the sign. Amen. We are in a time, it's going to be a whole lot of new preachers popping up. Sometimes these people are called to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's few to be called a pastor. It takes a certain type of spirit and a mindset to be a pastor. Because yeah. everyone cannot be a pastor. Because there's going to be a certain situation come in and God won't have to deal with you. But you go back to that scripture We should remember that God's way is our, not our way. His thought is not our thought. God tell you to tell this person to go here, but you want to do it your way. Mm -hmm. And you messing up the church because you ain't doing what God said. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody's not really called to be a pastor, and you will see it. Mm -hmm. Now people are seeing, and you're going to start seeing the shift coming in different churches. They're going to people who are going to be leaving because they're going to be looking for the word. They're going to look for the truth. Mm -hmm. God said, my word is the truth. Mm -hmm. If you read it and study your Bible, you're like, this ain't the truth. Mm -hmm. People are coming to see the truth. And Brother Teacher, when, Go we, ahead. when, we, when we look at that, this also, and, uh, and you look, take it uh, on, on a personal, personal level, is knowing what your Jericho is. Right. You, you know, because everybody, everybody's Jericho is not not the same. And uh, you may be battling, battling uh, which is the episode you just went through. Mm -hmm. I'm battling with that episode. Right. And, and that's what we do as church members. Right. Uh, I can step in and say, I do this, you, you know, we can do this. I can do this. That's what uh, the members of the church are for. Right. It ain't no spectators here. Right. You you've been called. You've been called to come here. Not not to sit at, sit be sit at the bench, but you've been called to be in discipleship. Right. That that means you is gonna have a disciple. You're gonna have a duty. Right. And, and those those are the, those are the things. So uh, you know, you have to say, well, what is my character? Right. You know, 
uh, we face some something here today, you, you know. So what is our Jericho? It's all our Jericho. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right. Mm -hmm. I was going to that, and I'm glad he did went to it the way he did. We all, people on Facebook, YouTube, who watching, your Jericho is your situation, what's going on. It going to be a situation you don't know what you going to do. Amen. Now, this how the devil going to work in your Jericho. As he's saying, as saints, we come together and support one another. That's why we're going to march around Amen. that problem. How we march around that problem? Oh, no. You pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. You fast. Amen. And you, you don't have to tell them mm -hmm. you pray about their situation. Amen. But you standing in the gap. Mm -hmm. You intercede. And once you do that, you're helping them to march around that wall. Amen. To God ready to break that wall down and go through. Now, this is how the devil going to step in. Everybody know, starting yesterday and today, for the next couple months, money going to be flowing. Mm -hmm. And people going to forget. Mm -hmm. But that wall, that Jericho, still going to be standing there because you did not complete it. Because... They have not did the task and the plan. It always a plan. And the first plan is, if you in the church is, we thank God that's coming in. How do we thank God? That $140. Mm -hmm. To thank God he got us through this time. Amen. We made it. We were struggling. We ain't had no hard time. Our belly's getting fat. We still, we still getting big and fat. We eat good. Mm -hmm. Restaurant cold. We still get restaurant food. Mm -hmm. That that goes back in your back background here, where it said this is a good first fruit. Good first fruit. Mm -hmm. Good first fruit. And the situation these churches, our churches, is going through now. That hundred forty dollars is gonna help the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. But God gonna turn around and bless you. Yeah. Amen. Because he give you something so you can give that first fruit. That $140 out of that $1,400 you're going to get ain't going to hurt you. Amen. Amen. But people start to get Now you march around this wall. Did that check? You check your in your email. If you got the new USPS information delivery, you see a, oh, oh, oh. You be sitting there at 6 o'clock in the morning. Waiting that, that that check comes, but you know the bank opened up by what eight or nine. You gonna go cash it? You stand in line six thirty. Mm -hmm. You know how folks is they stand in the line, but they forgot about still marching them around Jericho, their situation and problem. God gave that to be a blessing to you, so you can bless back. Mm -hmm. And when you bless back, He gonna make the situation more better for you. A lot of people gonna get that money, gonna be gone with a snap of finger, ain't got nothing to show for it, nothing to get. Amen. Amen. That's why you want the wisdom. You stick with the plan that God gave. God gave us a plan. Mm -hmm. His plan said, give him the first fruit. Mm -hmm. So it helped take care of the church. So it'll be no burden on other people or other things. Now they, they take us into our last thought was Joshua obeyed the plan. Before you go ahead, uh, to ask that question right there at the bottom is yeah. what testimony do you have that confirms God's steadfast deliverance? Yeah, and, and that is it. Uh, as you as you were saying that, we'll forget our testimony. Yes, the, the struggle before we got fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, now that is the dangerous that. We as Christians, people of the world have, right. is that when the blessing comes, they go to worship in the blessing, then the blessing. And now God, See, they can get it. Yes. We got to remember where the deliverance comes from. Right. You know, that's a steadfast, steadfast deliverance. You know, God has delivered me out of my situation. That's why Joshua had them had their mindset was built upon when they placed the 12 stone at the Jordan River to remember. Amen. You got to keep training yourself 
put yourself in a position to remember. When you don't, it's real easy. Soon that money hit, you gonna do this, you gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Walking in this church, <laughs> act like you got a different attitude. <laughs> Just be, oh, thank you, sister. Oh, God, go bless it. You walk in, don't even say nothing. Just sit there. Mm -hmm. Sit there. Got a little bit too. See, money just amplify who you really is. Yeah. And you have to be careful about your worship. Money mm -hmm. up. Right, you gotta. If you gonna worship that money, oh, it gonna show what you did. <laughs> and you ain't got the income to keep that money stay up. <laughs> and you, <laughs> folks, be acting different. You, you see them. Mm -hmm. They go in there order food. They never order that. Yeah, let me get ten pounds of shrimp. <laughs> let me get twenty pounds of crab legs. No, they can't afford it. They'll never go get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they ain't gonna be studying. But they're gonna forget God. They're gonna, they're gonna, they ain't gonna forget that money. See, money gonna forget about you because it's gonna be gone. That's right. Until you get the money back, then money gonna remember you. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna be talking to people different. When you're Christian, you talk to people the same way when you have money and you mm -hmm. don't. You mm -hmm. stay the same. Amen. Amen. Joshua's instruction may have seemed strange to people, mm -hmm. but they performed the first six days faithfully. On the seventh day, they got up early this day. They was increased. They daily marched and walked around the city seven times. When they finished marching the seventh time, the priest blew their trumpet and Joshua commanded the people to shout victory. <coughs> every day you get up, yeah. every day you do, you shout your victory. Yeah. You can say glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me through this day. Yeah. Thank you, God, for giving me this. Lord, I thank you for the victory I have. See, it seems like when man takes something away, somebody may let you borrow a car, and they act funny, take it from you. God can open the door, so blessing sitting right there in front of your face. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let them take it. Let them take that from you. But God gonna show you, show them, they think they hurt you. You get the last laugh. You ain't even got to laugh about it. But God gonna show you. I'm gonna take care of you regardless of what. Because your faithfulness. Amen. They was faithful for six days. Mm -hmm. When pastors have us do different things, it seems strange. Mm -hmm. People was talking about it. They were watching the video. Y'all ain't got no pulpit. Y'all ain't got no. Mm -hmm. That's how pastor wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, it's off the strange now. Half these churches is going up there now. The only reason that's up there now is because of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID and funerals. Mm -hmm. Once everything died down, they're going to go back down. Mm -hmm. It's a stage. We put the praise team up there. It's just a stage. That's all it is. God is able to give us the victory over enemies when we obey his word. And follow the instruction. As long as God's people are obedient to him, they are witness to his mighty power, exhibit on their behalf. We may not agree with the Lord's direction for our lives. We may not even want to accept his principle, but God is never short on his promise. He will come through for us whenever we submit to him and follow his word every day. The question is, what encouragement can you give to a new Christian about trusting God. D. Hmm. What new what encouragement can you give to a new Christian about trusting God? That's the question I got for you. Oh me? Yeah. <laughs> Starting with you. I mean Dickie Hill, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I I'm so used to you. <laughs> Talk about Dickie Constantine. Well, cause that's one of that questions again. <laughs> What encouragement can you give to a new Christian about trusting God? You have to believe that God is going to, you got to be open, you have to have an open mind, and you have to believe that God is going to do it for you by your own testimony. They can see the God within you. 
by the way you do things, you know. Okay. Um, I carry you, so. Okay. Do you think you want to take on on that? to a new Christian about trusting God? To have faith that he is going to do what he said he do, he's going to do. You can also share your testimony to let them know that maybe you've been in a place where they've been and God did it for you and he can surely do it for them too. Yeah. Sister Smith, for left you for last. Oh Lord, I, I, you know, <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking about that that we all have a testimony, you know, and, and it, I, my heart fell on my, my family member that's struggling with drugs. And for me, it's like study to show thyself approved, you know, study, dig into that word of God and let yourself be open to, to letting God do it, you know, because a drug habit is like, it's a mess. It's a mess. They clean one minute, and then you can snap your hand, and they back. You know, you have to trust God to walk with you in anything you're doing. You know, everybody did or sampled something, and that just fell on my spirit, you know, because yeah. that's real. Yeah. You know, a drug habit is real, and you're warring with two spirits, yeah. you right. know, every yeah. day. But yeah. you have to trust one of them, the good or the bad. Right. You know, and then get in the Bible somewhere, study when it get on you like that. It just fell on my spirit. I mean, I pray for that. You know, trust God, study his word, and let him get in you. And also, everything y'all said come to the, the basic thing. When you, for a new Christian, you got to have faith and trust in God and stick to the plan. Yeah. The devil will come with another plan. It might seem like it's easy, but stick to God's plan. Yes. Yes. See, people want to do stuff the easy way. They don't want to put in work. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, with being a Christian, you have to put your work. You got to build your faith up so that you got to put in work. Uh -huh. yeah. Joshua put in work. Joshua followed the plan. He did not deviate. Wherever God told Joshua to do, he did. Joshua seen as a child what happened when you don't follow and do what he said. And as these kids grow up in church watching the adults, they're going to see who following God, who doing what God said, and they're going to see who's one who get blessed and who don't get blessed. You see some people in church, they always got something going on. They always in the need. And you see the ones who don't. I'm going to go to the last part, liberal lesson. Libertarian lesson. Miraculous events such as fall of the wall at Jericho are sometimes difficult for modern day readers to believe. To our forebearer, however, the fall of wall, Jericho indicates stronghold of faith once again. Faith. Old Nitschko spiritual Jordan 50 battle of Jericho. Tell the story of God's assurance of victory in battle of the enemies of his people. As group of oppressed people, Israel found strength in God deliverance and God who can destroy enemies. It is critical to always remember that God is a God of deliverance and power. Oh. Amen. Always, God will deliver you, and God always will fight your battle. Amen. See, sometimes it'll seem like he's fighting, you don't see it. 
Because sometimes we can't see far in advance because our mindset. God may have you do something. It's just like you driving down the road. You always go, come down, let's say, you come down Cloud Road, then you turn. God may even have you go down Carpenter Road, then turn onto the cloud. So you can avoid accident. So you don't, you've got to follow. Because <coughs> you don't know what's ahead, but God knows what's ahead to get you ready. And this is what the lesson is about. The lesson was about today. Joshua, the conqueror. Joshua, the prophet of conquest. Conquest. Ooh, sorry, I'm saying it wrong. Joshua, the prophet of conquest. This is what the lesson was about. When you get overwhelmed, even as you in class, you in school, doing school work, as I learned you doing school work, uh, any type of thing, you don't get overwhelmed. And you don't get frustrated. Amen. That's when you just sit back. You ain't got to say a lot. You say your mind. God, give me through this. God, open my mind. God, give me the knowledge and wisdom I need to complete this. Mm -hmm. Or somebody talking to you, you want to snap so bad, you want to choke the mess out of them. Mm -hmm. God, give me the peace I need. Give me the direction I need how to handle this situation. See, you can be angry. You can be upset. It's what you do when you're angry. Because some people get angry and upset to do the wrong thing. And they're doing 10 to 5. I mean, 5 to 10. Or 10 to life. Instead of just listening to what God wants you to do. And then I keep in mind, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given it into thy hand, Jericho, and the king, therefore, the mighty man of valor. Wherever your enemy got for you, God gonna turn around, and take it from there, and give it to you. Mm -hmm. It was God say, "I take it from the unjust to give it to the just." Right. Don't be the unjust. God will take it from you. You come with a nasty attitude and stuff. That little thousand four hundred you gonna get, <laughs> it be gone so fast you don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. God will put things in the way. Yes, it will. And take it. He'll make a bill pop up. Thank you, Lord. He's going to make a situation pop up. Something wrong with your car. Oh, they're going to take $600 to fix that. Or it may take the whole thousand to fix it. You just stuck with 400 See, God got a way of doing things. Take it for the unjust to get to the just. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's what the lesson And be committed. We are in the time we got to be committed. Amen. As you Amen. see, our president, our ex-president wasn't committed to us. He wasn't committed to the rules. We got to be committed. We got to be committed to the church, committed to the pastor, committed yes. to yes. everyone. Yes. Be committed of the word. You'll be attitude. <laughs> be committed to that. How you talk to people. Be yes. committed. Yes. If you see trash on the ground, pick it up. Be committed. And this is basically what the, the lesson is about. They faithfulness, they stuck to the plan, and they was committed. Even though they seemed like they was overwhelmed, but God made a way so we could. And they could make it through. I'm going to get ready to uh, close down study school. I hope everybody got the understanding of the lesson and reflect on our inflect on our walls. Put it like this: Everybody got a wall in their life. If you're going to school, you got walls around you because you're gonna have finals, you're gonna have term papers, stuff to write. That's a wall to get through that, break that wall down. Trust in God, have faith in God, and God will give you the knowledge and wisdom Amen. to open your mind so it's easy for you to study, mm -hmm. easy to gain the knowledge, it'll be easy on you, it won't be rough when everybody's sitting there yeah. cramming, drinking energy drinks, trying to stay up, trying to get it, you are happy. And you didn't have to work as hard. As an adult, we're gonna have plenty of walls for bills, kids, vehicles, husband, wife, but we got to trust in God 
and keep marching around that wall. And when God gives a victory, we got to sound that victory as a testimony. And say, if I can make it through, and this is when they come back to a new Christian. Christian and a new person coming to the church don't know it. You can make it through. I've been through this. You can make it through. But you got to stay on the plan with God wants. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the Sunday school lesson, Lord. Lord, we thank the ones who was here in the audience. Yes, God. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank the people on Facebook and YouTube who's watching. Yes, God. Lord, they're going through a difficult challenge and being overwhelmed. Lord, we taught them how not to be overwhelmed, yes. to trust in you, to trust in your word. Yes. You say your word is the truth. Yes. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge they need especially during this time when they get this stimulus check. Yes. So they make the right decision. Yes. So they don't put themselves in a situation or in a bind during this time. Lord, show them by faith, Lord. Lord, let them work so their faith can build and grow. And the ones who do have the faith, Lord, let their light shine so others can learn from them, Lord, as we learn from Joshua. And Lord, keep us on the plan what the pastor won't and as you want. Because we do what your will say, not our will. Yes, Lord. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.